How's it going guys, this is Alex, and today we're going to be going over a brief history of Morocco and the mystery of its quote-unquote missing king. A more recent history of Morocco begins with the Alawite dynasty, who still governs over the country until this day. The Alawites originate from the ancient city of Sijil Massa, a historic trading port on the northern edge of the Sahara Desert in Morocco. The Alawite kings ruled through divine justice, claiming they were direct descendants from the prophet Muhammad himself. One of the most important leaders of the Alawite dynasty was the second monarch, Moulay Ismail, who took the throne in 1672 after his brother Rashid died in a horseback riding incident. Moulay was a tough ruler and he ruled with fear using his army of African American slaves who were tribalists and totally devoted to him. He wiped out the local warlords and fortified the eastern borders against the Turks. There's no doubt that by the end of Moulay's reign and at the beginning of the 18th century that he was able to strengthen and establish a centralized government for the future country of Morocco. However, there was still increasing influence from other European powers after his reign was over. Morocco was an important trading route between Africa and Europe, so it became a key subject to imperial rivalries between France and Spain. It is also rich in natural resources, primarily known for phosphate. In order to protect the country's sovereignty, Sultan Abd al-Hafid signed the Treaty of Fez in 1912, making Morocco a protectorate of Spain and France. This gave the country's control over certain territories in exchange for security and protection. After much rebellion, Morocco finally gained its independence from France and Spain on March 2, 1956. Mohammed V was named king of the newly independent Morocco. However, major social and political change would not come until a short five years later, when Mohammed V died during surgery and his son Hassan II assumed the throne. In 1962, a new constitution was adopted, which provided for a constitutional monarchy with a bicameral parliament consisting of the House of Representatives and the House of Councillors. The constitution outlines the powers and roles of the king, the government, and the parliament, and established a separation of powers and a system of checks and balances. Although a lot of social change was made, Hassan II's rule was also marked by political repression, with limited political freedoms, restrictions on freedom of expression and assembly, and the suppression of his political opposition. Many of his political opponents and activists were arrested, detained, and sometimes tortured during his reign. Morocco also experienced periods of political instability and social unrest during his rule, including protests and uprisings. Upon Hassan II's death, some celebrated his hard work, recognizing the effective economic development and diplomatic relations which he fostered throughout his reign. Others let out a sigh of relief for the passing of their authoritarian-like ruler. This brings us to our current king, Mohammed VI, the son of Hassan II. Muhammad VI was raised mostly in the royal palace, including where he received his education. His father was very strict and demanded success from his son through rigorous schooling and reinforcement methods such as physical abuse. His childhood friends would say that he was fascinated by anything that had to do with what lay beyond the walls of the palace. As Muhammad grew older, his interest in royalty seemed to conflict with his desire to have fun. Hassan would send spies on his son and he would constantly be found touching his responsibilities for nightlife. Hassan's response was that there must have been a quote-unquote chromosome error. As soon as Muhammad finished his master's degree, he went abroad and was seldom seen with his father afterwards. When Muhammad VI assumed the throne, it seemed like he would become an effective and modernizing king. Within months of taking the throne, Muhammad VI fired many senior officials especially those who spied on him, and replaced them with a cabinet of his childhood friends. He reformed Islamic legal code, making it easier for women to divorce, and built a network of motorways and railways across the country. But over the years, his enthusiasm to rule has declined. The king is often criticized for the amount of time he spends away from Rabat, the capital of Morocco. One official estimates that the king spent 200 days away from his kingdom last year, he spends a lot of time at his estate in France. Historically, France and Morocco have very close cultural ties, and many Moroccans live in France. Also, his estate is just around the corner from the Eiffel Tower. Some argue that the king has threatened the stability of the country with his absence, and it is difficult to create legislative progress without his ultimate power and decision making. In 
2011, changes were made to the Moroccan Constitution, which implemented more democratic policies, expanding the powers of the Prime Minister and Parliament, giving them broader constitutional powers, also making the local and regional elections decided by voters. The expansion of the Constitution amid the Arab Spring in 2011 is direct evidence which shows the lack of commitment which has shifted responsibility away from the king and given more power towards other branches of the government. Analyzing Muhammad VI as a king, it is noted that he is very shy and rarely appears in public. He often wears normal clothes and lacks the presentation as the monarch of the country. What this comes down to overall is just the lack of desire to be a ruler. As Muhammad VI's son, Hassan III, grows older, Moroccans can't help but beg the question whether Muhammad VI should abdicate in favor of his son due to his lack of effort as king. Overall, I think Morocco is an example of a monarchy in decline, which has obviously shifted more towards a republic-style government in recent years. Although Morocco is a constitutional monarchy, the monarch still has absolute power. If we see this trend towards democracy continue, there may be no more need for the monarch's involvement in the government and he may just become a symbolic figurehead like many others around the world.